Hey everyone, today I'm going to be trying out these saws I just bought that go on the end of a drill. So this one here, you just put it in the drill like a normal drill bit and you hold the handle on here. You have to use both hands or the entire thing would be spinning around. So that, the drill will spin that shaft into a little gearbox. The gearbox, I'm hoping there's oil in there at least or it'll burn itself out quite fast. I could open it up and see what's inside there. So the gearbox came assembled. I had to put the handle on. I had to put the chain on. I had to put the chain bar on. And I had to put it around the sprocket. And I had to put the guard back over it. It has no oiler like a normal chainsaw. Most chainsaws or a pole saw or an electric chainsaw, they all have oilers for the blade as it spins. This doesn't have that, so... The first time I actually go to try it on something, I think I should put a little oil on there, at least between every couple cuts if I was actually going to use it for something. But this was only $8 on the internet, and that's why I bought it more as a toy, because I was curious of how it would actually work. I go ahead and take the shaft. You see? It's, it, I can move it like a quarter turn, but it won't. I, I just can't get the traction to turn it myself, but the drill will be able to do it. We can maybe turn the drill up to a higher torque if it has any problems. This other one here, with my hand, I can, yeah, I can move it. It's a little bit hard, but I can move it. This is a reciprocating saw for a drill. It's got a smaller blade than a normal one would use, but about the same length. Came with another one, which is like multi, this big blades or big teeth are for wood. It's got like a medium one and a small one, which should be used for metal. So I'm curious right now to figure out how to how this will work. Both of these were about $8 on Timu, that website. So I'm going to figure out how it works or how well they do. Those, I think they'll work, but long-term function, I have no idea. They might go on a super long time. They might not. If this one's gearbox has oil and stuff in it, at least grease, I think it'll go on a pretty long time. And it it accepts normal blades by the look of it. Maybe. I have another saw, a jigsaw. There's a hole in there. I think it's how it cr clamps down into it. Now this other one, longevity, if you're going to be doing stuff with it, I don't think it'll work long because I don't think anyone's going to take the time to oil it properly. But for $8, if someone's just using it for a job or they have a property without many trees or if they plan on ruining it by putting it in a dirty hole to cut roots out for a bush, then maybe it'd be worth it, because you destroy a blade pretty fast on a chainsaw with a... Yeah, so that's another thing about that. This is not going to be moving super fast like a normal chainsaw because it's attached to a drill, so it's not as dangerous, but a lot of times if I buy a cheap chainsaw, especially made in China, it's not even that big of a deal. Like, I have a Harbor Freight chainsaw. It's been working perfectly for years. But I'd probably recommend changing the chain with a higher quality one. It says high quality, but considering this entire thing costs like less than half the amount of a normal chain, yeah, I'd probably want to replace it on a high speed chainsaw, but I don't think it'll be a problem on there. That website has a bunch of cool tools I've been trying just because they're super cheap and most people can't afford to get the better ones. And expensive is not always better, I've learned. It depends what it is. These drill brushes work pretty good on the truck for the grill and stuff. Things that are usually too tedious to bother doing. This was labeled on that same website these came from as a impact drill. I knew by looking at it, it probably wasn't true, but I saw someone else review an actual impact that looks like this with a removable battery for 30 bucks from them. This was $8 and it's just an electric screwdriver. Doesn't have much power, but whatever. Now, sometimes money does matter. Like these, this is a giant drill bit I bought just for drilling out the holes on birdhouses. Because most of my birdhouses are designed for tiny birds, so invasive sparrows don't move in. But if nothing moves in, I'll give whatever a chance by making a bigger hole. This was a very cheap uni bit. So if I tried using it on metal, I'd probably break it. I bought cheap ones from Harbor Freight, two for $10 years ago. Broke them both in a couple minutes. This was $80 at the Home Depot because I actually use it for drilling metal. It's still super sharp after hundreds of holes, so certain items like that, tools, do matter how they're made. That's a Harbor Freight drill bit kit. I just used it on metal the other day, very thick metal, drilling through a trailer hitch that for some reason from the factory didn't come with drain holes, so I noticed it was rusting on the inside. 
went through it like butter, super thick metal on a hitch. And this right here, these super cheap drill bits, doesn't matter if I break them. The entire kit with the box was, I think, 12 bucks. All right, I just had to grab a tripod because these things need both hands to operate them. I just want to see how these work for the very first time. I'll try the reciprocating one first. It's good the shaft actually has sides so it can get really good in there. Let's see how it works. I think that's me actually. Maybe I didn't put it in right. That's off balance a lot. Alright, I don't think it might not be me. It might not be me. Shaft does look a little weird. It'll work, but you can, you can see how it's kind of, yeah, the, the shaft is not straight. You see in slow motion how it's, it's not because I put it in crooked. Literally inside here, something is bent off balance. Look at this. But it'll work. If, if I only had to cut a couple things, this wouldn't be a problem, but otherwise, this thing is junk. Then you can turn this, which will slow the drill down. Wait, which setting is it? Yeah, I did that wrong. Well, that's off balance. Let's see if the other one is. The other one I think has a little better of a chance, actually. That's what I did wrong. Torque. There we go. I was touching the wrong thing. High speed, high torque. Now the other one's good because this actually has, it looks like it could even fit into the impact driver. Yeah, but it's not gonna stay in there doesn't have that nub for it to grab onto where you can't pull it back out. All right, let's see if this one's off balance too. Something's already making noise I don't like on it. The blade is not too tight. What's wrong with it? I think it just needs lubrication. Maybe if we put some oil on it, it would stop making that noise, but this one's perfectly balanced as far as the shaft. Let's put it on high speed. Yeah, that thing definitely needs some oil. I'm curious about it and how well it'll do. Let's grab a little bit of oil and we'll give it a try. All right, I'm outside now. Got a bottle of oil I'm gonna try putting on this blade see how it does wow look at this that thing loosened up so much just from using it those like 30 seconds in the house there you see it's got a screwdriver there to tighten the blade wow that thing yeah anytime you have a new chainsaw the blade has to be tightened right after the first use because it, it's gonna wear itself down pretty fast but we're still gonna give it a little test out here put some oil on it just a little bit, it'll spread it around. Then we're gonna go ahead and try it on a tree. Yeah, that seemed to have helped it a lot, quieted it down. Yeah, so 
If it stays oiled, I don't think it's a bad tool. I think the average person who would buy this probably, if they're not using it, just curiosity like me, they probably never use the normal chainsaw, I would assume. Because this seems like something you'd buy in the city if you only had a couple of things to trim. We're going to try trimming these couple branches that are coming over here into the yard on the base of this tree. As the tree gets bigger, I'm going to keep pruning it. I just want to see how this works exactly. Let's move in a little closer and I'll get behind it and give it a try. I got good hope. What's doing that? That is the drill. We need high torque. Not this thing's fault, it's the drill's fault. I guess we'll do it in high speed and just try it carefully. Try a different setting, I guess. Nope. It was on the... Eh. Nope. Try it again. There we go. It smells so good because this is a, it tastes just like root beer, this type of tree. Black birch. Those branches, people love to just suck on them. Now, now that I got the drill a little figured out, this is my first time ever using it, so that's a good thing. I have this thing on as much torque as it can possibly do, so that shouldn't be a problem now. Let me try it again. I also was running the blade in the wrong direction, so that's why there was problems. Let's try it again. Maybe not highest torque. Not the worst thing, but basically anything I could cut with this, I could do with the loppers a hundred times faster. Not terrible once you get the hang of it. Not terrible, just can't push too hard. Now let's try it slow speed, high torque. Wow, nothing stopping it in that mode. It's just slow and it's actually hurting my finger as it's pulling towards it. With that slow speed, the blade is acting like a tank track and it's pulling my hand into the branch and it actually hurts. Not the best setting to do, I just wanted to try it. Yeah. If I had a better drill, that would not be so much of a problem. Yeah. Come on. So the teeth of the chainsaw keep getting jammed and yeah so there's two issues the saw the, the drills having a problem and the other thing just keeps getting jammed because it doesn't have enough speed to go through what it's hitting so it's actually it's pulling me a good amount 
and yeah the, this drill is not powerful enough to be properly running this thing yeah so for eight bucks it works it's not the worst thing i guess it's kind of fun to use it too but i could have done everything there in a small fraction of that time with a pair of loppers and it's just light enough to balance itself super duper carefully look at that so I'll probably never use this thing again for what it is unless I was I might actually just use it as a chop saw indoors so I wouldn't have the exhaust of a chainsaw most most electric chainsaws I've ever I've ever used aren't something I would want to have on a property that sometimes there's massive blowdowns and jobs so I'll stick with the gas ones but yeah, I don't own an electric chainsaw. In fact, my mine I had last year, I donated it after it was more of a pain in the butt than anything else. It was a Harbor Freight one. Its oilers just leaked all over the floor. It just couldn't hold back like the other ones. Never had that problem with another chainsaw unless you have the winter formula left in it in the summer. Then it just becomes too thin with the heat, and it'll just go all over the floor. So this was interesting to try out. The majority of the problems were this drill is not powerful enough. I have it on the highest torque settings, and it actually in the high, the second highest torque setting, you see, in number one, it moves so slow that this is more like a tank track with a bunch of torque pulling your hand towards the branch and like crushing it. When it's in uh, a little bit of a higher speed with this thing torqued all the way down. No, yeah, that hammer in there is torqued all the way down. Is that the right word for it? I can't think of the right word, but this thing in this mode, if you were using this like a screwdriver, it would sink it so badly, but on a lower setting, it'll stop it from moving us that fast. It just, yeah. So, it was fun to try, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with it now. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching.